Mm. We're so back. We are born into a system. A system with numbers and papers. And lines. And waiting. You work hard, get good grades, go to college. I want to go to college. I got good grades. I overachieved. That's right, she did. Debt is good? Debt is so good. So much debt. I can totally save up and buy a house and start a family. I want a family. Oh. Starting a family means you need two or three jobs. You can't afford to buy. Oh. You can't afford to rent. The used cars cost as much as the new ones. Oh. Good debt is good. I was good. ahead of my class. This is a tool. Good grades. Go the to system, home. the numbers. Rent is freaking insane. Breaking news. Everything is terrible. Does it have to be this way? What if it was different? It's always been that way. We've got to build our way out of it. Yeah. Put control back to the hands of the people. A system with less paperwork. No waiting. Permissionless. Just because you're born into a system? Doesn't mean you have to live with it. Hey, there's that Coinbase ad if you guys missed it this week. Holy moly, what a weird dystopian ad for cryptocurrency basically saying to exit the system, which... I mean, we've been talking about that for ages, right? You know, fix the money, fix the world, all that sort of thing with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And we're just in this cycle going in and out of it. But we are starting to see signs of recovery from the latest bear market. And it initially started with, of course, the Bitcoin miners becoming quite profitable. Again, I have quite a few of those hosted, as some of you may be aware of. And then now we are starting to see, or after that, I suppose, we started to see CPU mining recover. And then now we are starting to see GPU mining recover across the board. The thing is, is we have so many new tools now to participate in mining that it is simply overwhelming. I've been doing a lot of work over at locals at sonofatech.locals.com and providing information over there on different options for you to still participate within mining. You still have this kind of ability as well to do research and mine a plethora of different cryptocurrencies, which means that your research is more important than ever now when it as it pertains to mining. You aren't going to turn on rigs and just mine Ethereum and be good to go. You have crypto over here, crypto over there. You got different exchanges, everything that you got to go ahead and put in the time and research on to make sure that you are being as profitable as humanly possible. There are a lot of different strategies and micro strategies that I go over a lot uh, on locals and then I'm still doing a lot of research on too. And luckily there's a bunch of other content creators that you can watch uh, that are doing the cryptocurrency mining that can give you some insight there as well. Today though, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin going over, I guess going over 39,000 now at this point, which is pretty incredible. Looking to break that 40K, hopefully here in the next week or so. And that's running up to the bull run. Now, remember, in my humble opinion, we'll be hitting somewhere between 45,000 and 50,000 in the April time zone, which is when the next halving of Bitcoin happens. Then we're also going to be talking about the stalled stalled crypto bills and they aren't going to be put in until 2024 now this seems like good news in my humble opinion we're also going to be talking about the bitcoin miner ant pool refunding that 3 million bitcoin transaction fee that was accidentally used la or, or spent last week which we talked about on last week's show we also have Ethereum rebranding to Hypra. Interesting note there. And a brand new spec mine opportunity that has gone well, semi-viral in the crypto Twitter sphere. 
and has been covered quite a bit, but we are going to take a look at it. That's going to be Carlson. And then we have some of the coverage of what I've been mining, all of that sort of stuff. I do want to cover a little bit of FUD surrounding Dynex because this has been going on for ages now, and I kind of want to squelch it and uh, give you guys my opinion on that. Um, and then we will talk more and more about mining. We'll have Q&A at the end of the show. So don't forget to go ahead and save your questions for the end of the show. Super chats are never required, always appreciated, and the first to be answered as far as questions go. Tagging at Son of a Tech will highlight the message orange and make it easier for me to read. I don't have all the answers, but for the questions that I do have the answers for, I will let you know. And I'm pretty transparent. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you guys I need to do some research on it. There's still a ton that I've been going over here recently. So welcome to the Crypto Mining Show, your one-stop shop for all cryptocurrency news from the perspective of a cryptocurrency miner. I go by Blind Run on the internet and Matthew in real life. And let's go ahead and hop into the ad for the day from BT Miners. Today's sponsor is BT Miners. BT Miners has been a longtime sponsor of the channel and a proven reliable source for ASIC miners. If you are looking to purchase ASICs hardware from Bitcoin to Dogecoin miners, they are available for purchase on bt-miners.com. BT Miners has recently launched an app on iOS and Android that lets you browse their inventory by profitability and return on investment. Follow the affiliate link in the description and use promo code S-O-A-T for a discount. And welcome back. So first thing first, we have Bitcoin over 39,000. There's an article talking about this. This is the first time since May of 2022 that we've seen these prices. Overall, crypto market capitalization is at its highest level since May of 2022, with nearly 400 billion US dollars added since the start of October. And that's also always known as Uptober. I would presume that per the usual, we have the kind of push through of only up through the end of the year. That is pretty typical for Bitcoin in general, unless we are in that off year, that terrible year that happens every four years where the bear market is stop starting and we start to see a bunch of red in the charts. That being said, the rest of the years, of course, like I stated, you typically see this go up from October through January, and then you are good to go. Bitcoin rose to 38,800 for the first time since May of 2022 during European morning hours on Friday. Continu continuing its strong multi-month uptrend buoyed by expectations of institutional demand. The asset added nearly 3% in the past 24 hours, mirroring an uptick in global stock markets. Futures of U.S. indices S&P 500 and Dow Jones jumped 0.17% higher in pre-market trading, while European index stock 600 added 0.52% since Friday's open. The price jumps come as euphoria around at or around a planned spot exchange traded fund ETF for short in the US heats up and on-chain behavior suggests a significant amount of the asset has been moved to cold storage indicating demand and a lack of imminent sell pressure strength in bitcoin also helped a bump in overall capitalization which crossed the 1.5 trillion dollar mark on thursday and has added 400 billion dollars since the start of october strong narratives in artificial intelligence layer one blockchains and gaming have aided growth in large cap tokens with prices of solana's soul and avalanche's avax more than doubling in the past two months meanwhile some market watchers said Bitcoin could see muted growth as December progresses. Now, I do have to call this out. Gaming and crypto is something that I have not been a fan of in, in, in general, right? Because I don't like the idea of an already flooded market of <laughs> microtransactions and these 
uh, what are they called again? The the battle passes, these seasonal things that make me continue to pay for a game over and over. And with kids, if any of y'all have kids, the Fortnite battle passes and all that BS. It's like, how much money do I really have to spend on gaming? I'm old school. I want to buy my one copy and I want to have all of the content in it from day one. And I want the ability to earn all of that to be given to me for the hard work I put into that individual game. That being said, there are projects that are looking a, a lot better in my humble opinion that I didn't think would be able to be successful in the past. Neoxa is what I'm referring to here now. And I started messing again, messing around again with Neoxa. The integration into Fortnite is super interesting, meaning that like you can earn in Fortnite while just playing the normal game. I think the integration into Twitch is exceptionally interesting. And provided they don't run into any legality issues, which it seems like they are not, surprisingly, because I thought they were going to run into a lot. Provided they don't, I think that it might be a pretty bullish one to take a look at. And it's proof of work. It does have its master node side of things. Usually I'm not a fan of hybrid coins, especially because I've been burned on so many of them that I'm very careful around them, but we might have, I might have been a little too harsh on Neoxa. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know that after I've done some more research on it and we've seen them kind of develop more. Now, Republican leadership squabbles delayed U.S. crypto bills until 2024. This is an interesting one. I kind of wanted to go over it. We are covering some politics here because, well, politics do affect cryptocurrency and they it, they do affect, you know, what, what how the price is going to move, what you're able to do legally within your geographical location. It's important to keep kind of, a, you know, a finger on the pulse of what is going on. Republican Representative French Hill and Democrat Representative Jim Himes see potential future uh, floor votes for crypto bills being key to convincing the Democrat-controlled Senate to play ball. Uh, the key notes here is that Republicans had hoped to get U.S. crypto legislation through the House this year, but key lawmakers are now targeting 2024. A Democrat who has negotiated on the legislation said success in the House may move the Democrat-controlled Senate. After months of hoping U.S. crypto legislation could win House of Representatives approval this year, lawmakers doing much of the behind-the-scenes work are looking to 2024 as the time when digital assets bills may get passed by the Republican-controlled chamber through the effort still, or though the efforts still face an uphill climb in the Senate where Democrats have the reins. Representative French Hill, who is a Republican from Arkansas, said, or er, is the chairman of the House Financial Service Committee subcommittee that focuses on digital assets. Said the House's consideration of two major crypto bills, one to regulate U.S. stablecoin issuers and another to form a broad system of rules for crypto markets, has likely shifted into early 2024. In my humble opinion, we can hope that this shifts even further and further out because cryptocurrency and technology in general move so fast that the government can't really feasibly regulate properly, at least in my humble opinion. The House Republicans' recent fight over installing a new speaker, which ensnared key crypto negotiator Representative Patrick McHenry as stand-in speaker for a time, delayed the floor time lawmakers needed for legislation, Hill said at a Blockchain Association event in Washington on Thursday. Quote, that I think set us back a little bit, end quote, echoed Senator Cynthia Loomis, who is from Wyoming, at the same event. Loomis, who has been pressing her own wide-ranging crypto legislation in the Senate, also suggested that the stablecoin bill specifically will make more progress next year. Now, I think that obviously from the stablecoin bill perspective, stablecoins in general are probably the biggest threat to the U.S. dollar if we are going to see a digital dollar. So getting that regulated before, say, a an onslaught of CBDCs for the U.S. dollar coming soon, right? It's already started. We've talked about this last year. 
I think is why the focus will be on stable coins, because I do think that we'll start to see central bank digital currencies globally and in every single nation. And I think that that is, from my perspective, the thing that we want to push away from, I think stable coins versus central bank digital currencies are much preferred, things like Tether, so on. But we'll have to see what happens. So it goes on to say that, uh, quote, that is an area that could come in early 2024, said Jim Himes, a Democrat of Connecticut, who has also occupied a leading role in the House negotiations for both bills as the committee's top Democrat representative Maxine Waters withdrew support, suggested the industry needs to counter what House Democrats are hearing from outside groups and U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission Chair Gary Gensler, a dedicated critic of the industry. He was among a handful of Democrats on the House Financial Services Committee to buck this party's ranking member on the committee to favor both crypto bills this year. Waters has since indicated she's still open to moving forward on legislation, and Heim said Thursday that if Waters gets on board and the overall House approves a bill, a Democrat Senate sits up and takes notice. On the other side of the Capitol, the weather is uglier, Heim said, of the crypto views of some Senate Democrats, including Senator Jer Sherrod Brown, a Democrat of Ohio, who runs the Senate Banking Committee. Quote, you could see a path, but I think it probably starts with a strong bipartisan vote in the House, Heim said. Brown's Banking Committee quote, has been a tough nut to crack, end quote, said Loomis, who is a member of that panel. But she said that the fact that the U.S. Department of the Treasury recently came forward with crypto illicit finance policy proposals is a good sign that the administration is now willing to negotiate, which could nudge the Senate Democrats too. Hill argues that the implosion of FTX last year and the recent massive settlement and criminal conviction of Binance, which may give some lawmakers pause about the sector, should actually encourage pursuit of the legislation. He said each example of bad behavior, quote, only reinforces that we need to do this and do it right the right way, end quote. Having no regulations in place is what's going to advantage illicit finance. So even if a crypto bill passes the House next year, it still needs approval in the Senate and a presidential signature. In practical terms, that may require plugging it into a more complex package and attaching it to must-move legislation such as a spending bill. Passing laws takes time, said Kirsten Gillibrand, a Democrat of New York who has partnered with Loomis on crypto legislation, warned the industry crowd on Thursday. Now I'm gonna go ahead and say this. This because this is this this goes back to the old the old adage of like it, you know, just because you regulate it doesn't mean that the people that are doing the illicit finance are going to stop doing it. And and we can look back to a very similar technology to cryptocurrency, which was peer-to-peer -peer networks, which allowed people to basically uh, trade or give away uh, basic media files, whether that be things like, you know, movies, music, that sort of stuff, television shows. And basically what we've seen on that front is that that still exists. You'll never get rid of it. There will always be the people that are going to participate within those peer-to-peer -peer networks. And, you know, if people want to basically move money around illicitly or like in with for illegal ends or means, right, it's going to happen no matter what. And so I don't think that the regulation is going to stop any of that. I think where the regulation will definitely uh, affect cryptocurrency in general will typically be the adoption by the masses or the people that do want to follow all the rules. And I think that's a dangerous precedent to set when we're talking about cryptocurrency for, for the global perspective, because really at the end of the day, all cryptocurrency was supposed to do was bypass the government and bypass the banks in general in the first place. So its original intent was to do to 
avoid legislation in the very first place or regulation as well. And that was to, in hopes, avoid the manipulation by governments and banks of the currency that you utilize to, that makes people poor over time, right? It's like, you you put all this money into your savings, you pay into social security, and then they just print more, thereby devaluing your retirement funds and making it to where you have to work until you die. This is the, the world we live in, and that's really what the Coinbase ad was pointing towards. It'll be really interesting to see if we start to see attacks on Coinbase and Crypto.com and the likes in the US. I would think that those would come down the pipeline as well, but Either way, the government is still super slow to move uh, in this in this realm, and I think it, that cryptocurrency will mature and move faster than the governments can really push towards. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section and the live chat below, and I will get to them later. Now, last week we had a record high transaction fee that Antpool mined. And Antpool has actually given this back to the person that made the mistake. Antpool said it would verify the identity of the sender if they sign an on-chain message via another Bitcoin transaction using the same message, which will prove ownership. Bitcoin miner Antpool will refund a $3 million transactional fee that it processed last week after a likely user error led to the highest ever fee paid for a transfer on the Bitcoin network. Quote, on November 23rd, some users submitted a, a, an 83 Bitcoin as a gas fee, end quote, Antpool said in a Thursday announcement. The risk control system of Antpool temporarily froze the fee when packaging the transaction. Miners are entities that utilize massive computing resources to process transactions on blockchains such as Bitcoin, receiving a predetermined reward each time they successfully mine a block. Miners are not obligated to return fees to users, but may choose to do so when the amounts are unusually large. Antpool said it would verify the identity of the sender if they sign an on-chain message via another Bitcoin transaction using the same message, which will prove ownership. My question to you all is, let's say you were solo mining Bitcoin and this and you picked up this transaction fee in the block. Would you give it back or would you keep it? Would you give some of it back? I don't know. That's a, that's a pretty, it's a pretty, 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 uh, crazy, uh, <laughs> thing to think about in general, you know, because that's a ton of money and it, it's pretty interesting that Ampool is going to give that back. I think it, it uh, bodes well for the perception of cryptocurrency in general that, that miners would return a, an accidental fee payment of that. Uh, I think that, you know, we had seen a lot of this on the side of Ethereum for quite some time, but that was a little different because people were trying to manipulate the chain and that was raising the fees, right? So we'll have to see where it goes, but I don't know that I could give it back. I, I'd be I'd be tempted to just go ahead and keep it. This happened last Thursday. Ample received the standard 6.25 Bitcoin as well as 85.2163 Bitcoin and fees for all transactions included in that erroneous transaction. On-chain data shows the sender's wallet was set up just minutes before the transfer and the recipient received only 55 Bitcoin of the original 139 Bitcoin that was sent. That is a big boo-boo. So always make sure as well, you know, a lot of cryptocurrency comes with that personal responsibility and you need to be paying attention to your fees. Luckily, a lot of wallets and services will notify you when fees are high, but if you're sending, you know, from a command line wallet or something, you can make those mistakes. So just make sure you're paying attention to the fees when you are making transactions so that you aren't spending more than you really should. And this is especially important when you are moving cryptocurrency around a lot to go ahead and whatever, like cash out your mining rewards and so on to pay power bills and all of that. 
be very careful as it pertains to all of that. And this is kind of a warning as far as that is concerned, because they are not entitled to give it back to you. Now, Ethereum is a really interesting project that launched recently, and I've covered it on this channel. The reason it's interesting is that they took the SHA-3 out of ET hash and they added Blake-3. What this has temporarily done is knock all of the ET hash ASICs off or of that network. So there's no ability for ET hash ASICs to actually mine this. In theory, though, you could develop ASICs for this, but it would be cost prohibitive, especially considering the fact that you have that memory hardening that's a part of ET hash. Because even though ET hash is mineable by ASICs and you can build ASICs for them, it is still just not as efficient as, you know, GPUs. Well, it is as efficient, but not as stark of a difference when you are referencing something like uh, a bitcoin or you know we could go down the list right an, an asic mineable coin that doesn't have memory hardening it's a little bit easier uh caspa is an example of this and so on so you can get way more efficient on those with asics than you can with something that has some sort of memory hardening in it uh, and some component like that now this was kind of the unique thing that Ethereum did the problem is, is they, they've been overshadowed by Ethereum with the name Ethereum, and I think that, that is fair. The other things that Ethereum has done that's been interesting is that they have continued on the development that was continued on with Ethereum, but in a unique way that removed the merge. They also fixed a lot of the MEV problems that were going on with Ethereum, at least to the best of their ability, and this was thanks to help from like IoT API, from Viper.net, those mining pools, and a few others that brought this to their attention. So they've been doing really good work, in my humble opinion. And now to kind of move away from their attachment to Ethereum, they are rebranding to Hypera. For Ethereum, the innovative Ethereum proof of work EVM chain is excited to announce its rename campaign and the final name as chosen by the community Hypera with a ticker symbol Hype or HYP. The rename campaign was launched in November to address the main challenge of being overshadowed by Ethereum and to highlight the unique and never before done features of Ethereum. Hypera aims to be a fast, secure, and scalable EVM chain that preserves the proof-of-work consensus mechanism and supports interoperability with other blockchains. Hypera also introduces novel innovations such as dynamic block rewards, adapted difficulty adjustment, and incorporating Ethereum's proof-of-stake upgrade features while keeping proof-of-work. The new name reflects the vision of creating a hyper-efficient and hyper connected EVM chain that can power the future of decentralized applications. The rename campaign was a success with over 1,000 community members participating in the voting process and expressing their support for the new name. The official rebranding will take place on December 8th when the Hyper or when the Hyper switch will go or switch over will happen. Hypera invites everyone to join the celebration and witness the EVM chain that will revolutionize the proof of work space. Of course, that's what they're saying, not what I'm saying. The community support for Hypera has been overwhelming, with many users expressing their enthusiasm and excitement for the new name and the new features. Hypera is not only a name change, but also a brand identity that reflects the values and vision of the project and its community. Hypera is also looking forward to expanding its reach and adoption to new markets and regions where it can offer a superior EVM experience to users and developers. Hypera is committed to building a global and diverse community that shares its passion for decentralization, innovation, blah, 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 all the typical kind of keywords that cryptocurrency projects go ahead and pop out at you. I think this is a good move from Ethereum and rebranding to Hypro will be really good coming ahead of the next bull run. And we'll have to see, you know, if the development continues to uh, push forward and obviously they'll need some redirects from Ethereum.org to not lose the old people. I think a rebranding will be good though overall. Let me know what you think in the comment section below as well as the chat. I have mined quite a bit of Ethereum and... 
I am happy to see this and we'll hopefully see, you know, where it goes from here. Speaking of replacing Shaw 3 with Blake. This is a practice that obviously started with Ethereum. It's matured into other projects. And now we have a spec mineable coin that is making waves in cryptocurrency like Twitter sphere and cryptocurrency mining YouTube channels, all that sort of stuff. And it was kind of out of nowhere. It's called Carlson. And what Carlson is, is Carlson is essentially a, let's see, how do we, how do we put it? Uh, Carlson is a fork of Caspa. And so it's taking on those Caspa terms, right? But it took the SHA-3 out of the mining algorithm and replaced it with Blake. Now, what this means is that currently there are no bit streams from FPGAs and no ASICs that can mine on the network. However, it's kind of a touchy subject if you if you ask me because you know they claim that they're a fork of the caspa network with asic resistance but if you look at the mining algorithm in general there's no asic resistance there there's not anything like prog pow implemented there's no memory hardening like et hash has if somebody wanted to develop a bitstream for carlson it'd be pretty straightforward. If they wanted to eventually put ASICs on the network, that would come. Now, if you get into their Discord, this has been brought up, so it wouldn't be fair if I didn't mention that the plan is that if this is the possibility down the line, the algorithm will be modified. Now, a lot of people over on crypto Twitter and everywhere else are saying, you know, they're super happy about the low power consumption and low heat of Carlson. Well, yeah, that's going to happen if you don't have any real ASIC resistance in it. So, don't expect that to continue when they need to modify the algorithm to go ahead and block ASICs. This will change down the line. So this is what I would consider to be a pretty interesting project. It's something that I've talked about in the past a lot. Like, I think it would be really cool to see this. I have some disappointments, like we are seeing forking of the old Go code. We aren't seeing, or, and I haven't seen like Rust implementation coming down the line. I presume they'll follow along. It'll be kind of like what Ethereum is doing with Ethereum in the fact that as Ethereum releases updates on the proof of stake side, they're taking and modifying them for proof of work over on Hypera now. And we will probably see that, I think, with Carlson, where you'll get a release of Rust over on the Caspa side, and then that will move over to Carlson. Now, Carlson is also different in its emissions in the fact that it doesn't really use the same uh, breakdown. Right now, for example, the block reward is only 50 Carlson. So you're not getting, you know, the, the 180, I think it started with 240 or whatever it started with, you know, on, on the Casper side, that's not happening on the Carlson side. Good notes about this, of course, no ICO, no pre-mine, and then adoption out the wazoo. I've never seen adoption. Within the first week of this launching, you had Hero Miners on board, you had SRB Miner on board, you had Hive like already updating to the latest SRB Miner, you have uh, Wooly Pool on board. It's actually quite impressive where you have, like I said, SRB Miner version 2.4.2. It's main improvement, right? Or, well, this is 2.2. Sorry, 2.4.1 was when they released it with its main improvement being the support for Carlson on AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel GPUs right off the snap, okay? Pretty crazy. So the only question here is the, the main miner being SRB miner. A lot of people kind of had a, have a bad taste in their mouth from SRB miner after the drama with Dynex and basically SRB miner doctor over there bypassing the SAT jobs to increase the hash rate for miners. And so, you know, you have that kind of thing to worry about. And then, like I said, it's not truly ASIC resistant. There's no listing for exchanges yet. Here's my thoughts, okay? It doesn't hurt to throw a couple spec mines on there. I had four rigs on here. I have two rigs right now on here. I'm about to go back out to the farm and mess with some stuff. It doesn't hurt to spec mine it. Why? 
Well, because you have so much adoption already. Everybody thinks they're missing out. This is going to be the next Caspa. And because they missed out on Caspa, they're just popping off on this. I don't necessarily agree because basically it's a Caspa clone that even in its implementation of doing what it said it's going to do, which is ASIC resistant, that wasn't even fully fleshed out. We're also talking about old Go code, not like... There's things where like, I'm like, ah, you know, give it time, see where it goes. But if you're talking about everybody just mining it and being like super high on it and kind of the, 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 you know, euphoria surrounding it, it could list at a very high price on the flip side of that though. It could be a complete dud. Why is that? Well, every GPU miner and their mom is looking for profitability right now. So if this is primarily targeting GPU miners and all the GPU miners hit it with an intention of selling it as soon as it hits an exchange, the sell pressure will be absolutely insane. And if the price is around the same price as Caspa, nine times out of 10, retail is going to go buy Caspa. And so there's no buying pressure. So that's the flip side. Good, bad. You have it, I give it to you all. That's kind of what I'm looking at with it. It doesn't hurt to spec mine it. Would I throw my whole farm on it like I did with Caspa? Hell no, I wouldn't. Um, that's my humble opinion. You guys let me know if you're mining it, how much, how high of a percentage of your farm are you mining it with? You know, let me know in the live chat and the comment section below. Speaking of Dynex, because we had this kind of drama surrounding, of course, Doctor and Dynex and all of that with SRB Miner, there's been this thing going around forever. And it's so frustrating. I didn't want to talk about this. I kept ignoring it because it is, frankly, in my humble opinion, the dumbest reason to call Dynex a scam. But there is an article here. I linked it down below. You can go through and read it. I'm not going to read the whole thing. This thing started out with Daniel Keller from Flux uh, when Dynex first launched. It's been perpetuated through articles and crypto Twitter and all of the, the crypto discords. And look, you guys need to sit down and shut the fuck up because here's the deal. Just attacking a cryptocurrency off of the actions of an individual that you can't even prove is a part of the network is dumb. And then let me ask you this. Can you mine Dynex to your own node wallet and or to your own wallet and self custody it? Yes. Can you send that Dynex to an exchange and sell it that day? Yes. How the fuck are they going to scam you? Maybe if you're an idiot and you let it all tank to zero and you're not mining it and taking your profits, there's, this isn't like a token project that was similar to like the scams that this Daniel Matz guy was a part of anyways. So unless you have a technical reason, a technical reason to call Dynex a scam, like let's say you come out and you prove that they're not finishing jobs on the back end or something like that, which... Clearly, after the, the shit that we had go on with Doctor is not the truth, okay? Clearly, after basically Dynex caught one of the largest mining software skipping jobs, they canceled that miner. They're, they're clearly trying to solve the jobs that they're trying to solve, okay? So if you're going to come out and just throw shade at individuals, because why? Because you want your flux bag to go up? I mean, great. I'd love my flux bag to go up too, but attacking individuals on a personal level isn't going to do that for you. So I, I keep getting this. People are like, what is your opinion on it? They pay, paste it all over the place. They're like, oh, but Daniel Matz is in, involved in it. I don't care. Can I mine it? Can I send it to an exchange and sell it the same day? If the answer is yes, then you can't scam me. It's my fault if I hold it, right? Or something along those lines. But there's not the, the variability in a proof of work cryptocurrency to, to scam on this level is not there. 
let me give you an example of, of a proof of work cryptocurrency that was able to scam. The ones that typically are, are ET hash forks that have a token component, uh, proof of work blocks, pink, flora, these things. And what they do is you mine it and then they convince you to take that token and then stake it into some sort of stable coin platform or something, right? And then they rug the, and then they rug that token aspect of it. So that's kind of how the, the, the proof of work scams happen. There's none of that going on in Dynex. Maybe there will be later. On the flip side, I have not been a fan of the direction Dynex is going. I, I get it. They want, you know, people to purchase it more and they want it on exchanges that don't like privacy coins, but I quite preferred the privacy options of Dynex. That also, though, is just proof that they're not trying to hide anything either, right? So obviously the purpose of the Dynex token is to utilize it to pay for the work to solve these jobs. So having transparency in it isn't the worst thing. I just prefer to keep privacy features intact, in my humble opinion. So I did not agree with that move. But there you go. Now, let's talk about Abelian or Able token and, and uh, some stuff that's been going on there. There's a huge arbitrage between XT and MEXC right now. If you guys aren't familiar, I've been talking a little bit about this project for some time, quite some time now. And Able is basically uh, had has been on XT for a while. Withdrawals and deposits were enabled. Then they took it down from maintenance on the wallet. And when they did that, uh, they, they when they brought it back up from maintenance, they didn't re-enable withdrawals. This has obviously caused quite a disparity in price between MEXC and XT. And so if you are trying to sell it, uh, I would just suggest that you take a look at the different prices between the two before you deposit into them. You're typically going to have better prices on an exchange that allows withdrawals because people that are buying the token to hold it, they aren't going to want to hold it onto an exchange. So in the case of like XT, the people that are trading on XT right now for ABLE, they're just trying to trade it for short-term uh, gains, right? And that means that you're going to have a ton of volatility within there. They can't withdraw it. So nothing's getting sucked out of the volume. Pretty bad there. Hopefully XT gets this resolved, but it has, like they said here in their post from a billion, it's been two weeks since Able was the first, was first listed on XT exchange. And unfortunately, many of our members have been experiencing deposit and withdrawal issues. Currently, deposit and withdrawal of ABLE on XT Exchange is no longer suspended, but there are frequent reports regarding transaction delays and lags when withdrawing ABLE from XT Exchanges. Now, I've talked to my friend in Mexico, and the withdrawal button is still grayed out on XT Exchange. So you can deposit, but you can't withdraw. And um, it says, you know, that they enabled it. I also asked their support. They were like, we'll look into it. And I haven't gotten any uh, response from their support on if that's going to be resolved. Now I bring up Able because everybody's going to be asking me what I've been mining. And the fact is, is I've been mining Able on two different pools. Here's one pool with my main farm. I have my whole farm on it. Something like 100 and something GPUs. Um, this is uh, ablepool.io. Uh, this is the easiest one to kind of get running with Hive, uh, Hive OS. And I do have a guide over on Locals. If you're interested, you can check it out at sonofatech.locals.com. And the rewards have been decreased significantly. A lot more people are starting to mine it. I think with two, what is this? This is two, yeah, two giga hash. Uh, we're doing about, you know, 40, 45, let's say 45 able uh, every 12 hours. So that's going to be around 90 able a day on two giga hash, which is going to give you, and it's selling for anywhere from $1.40 to $1.50. So, you know, what is, what is that on two giga hash? A dollar, uh, let's say a dollar forty times 90 right now about 126 dollars a day on two giga hash now the reason why is because it is 
uh, more difficult to mine and people have not really put the time and the effort into mine it. So this is why it's really kind of been <coughs> a bit of a gold mine for a lot of miners over on locals. The other thing that I'm mining is Carlson, like I said. So I have Carlson up right now and that is obviously right now, like we talked about earlier, I think I'm getting like, four, it says I got two rigs on there now. I'm going to go put my Intel rig back on and another rig back on today. Let's say 500 a day. You know, how much is that going to be worth? Well, you're talking about a 50 block reward, a ton of mining cell pressure potential. I have no idea. My assumption would be that we would see it actually list closer to the current price of CASPA. And the reason for that is because we have 25% of the block reward that CASPA has. We have a higher cost to mint because of the GPUs. And that would be a pretty decent listing price. So, you know, 500 a day at 14 cents would be... $70 a day on those two rigs. Potential. That's my speculative mind. It's not financial advice and there's no current listing of it. So there you go. The other thing I've been mining is because I have been uh, setting up rigs now with heftier CPUs is obviously uh, mining Oh, now I'm going to forget <laughs> the big CPU coin that's been popping off. Why well, I, I am a I thought I had it linked up here, but I clearly do not. Zephyr, right? So, and that has been on. Which pool have I been that on that one on? I didn't think I was on Hero Miners with that one. Anyways, I that pool's not pulling it up, so I don't remember what pool, but. We've mined a few of that quite a bit. So there you go. Now let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the mining profitability that is going on. And it is primarily due to Etika. Now we need to talk about Etika right now because Etika is there's, there's, Two different tokens that everybody needs to be aware of. There's the mine, the the main mineable token, and then there and then there is the a token that you can mine. And the one that's profitable is the SHA-3 Solidity, and that is the one that's extremely profitable. If you go to, for example, we'll go over here and I'll show you the difference. So you have Etika eGas, which is actually going to be an ET hash based coin and not the same price, right? 17 cents. And then if you go to the ETI, this is one that is currently more profitable. It's a dollar and 11 cents and it is mineable in a different way. I'm going to be working on guides for this this week because people have been asking for it. I know a lot of other people have been talking about it, but it's very profitable on some GPUs right now. Other things that are popping off, though, like you can see, uh, Nexa is doing pretty well, which is awesome. Um, a good mix. Chlor popped off this week, so people that were mining Chlor. I'm going to I'm going to go back to what I've told you guys before. Um, here's the thing. So the, the, the thing that you need to understand as it pertains to mining with GPUs right now is that what you're looking for is going to be looking for like the, uh, the amount, right? That you, that you're actually mining, not necessarily going to, or the yield is what it's known as, not necessarily the cost, so, or the, sorry, the, the amount that you're making or earning. And the reason for that right now is if you were to pop over to Etika, for example, what you would end up having is an issue of everybody mining it. So the difficulty being up higher, right? So you can see here the seven day history, this goes up. So 
that should result in a difficulty spike, but there's some uniqueness to this one that we will be talking about later. Obviously, with Caspa, you can see massive increase in difficulty. So is it smart to buy a KS Pro? I don't know, right? Same with all the other big ones. So you're really looking for yield in coins that are still profitable, right? So something like um, the Radiant or, or whatever it may be. We could click into here and, and look. You kind of go down the list. You want it to still be profitable, but you also want to have lower difficulty, right? So it, it, Radiant, I think, is a good example right now because a lot of people moved off of Radiant. Is that correct? if I recall. Yeah, so Radiant's a good example um, where you had a bunch of high hash rate and then it kind of dipped off here. It's still profitable, right? You go over to Radiant on 4090, you're still able to clear your power costs, but your yield is higher on what you can hold. And right now, a lot of these coins are gonna be flip-flopping back and forth. So that's kind of the strategy that I'm utilizing right now, other than like, obviously there's some unique outlier cases that I'm looking at mining. So that's kind of the whole thing behind it. There is money everywhere though. Um, you can mine Pepe coin and be profitable. You know, anything at 10 cents a kilowatt hour is now profitable, right? Which is amazing. Um, and anything, you know, you can get that even better if you have a better power cost, that sort of thing. So I think we're back, boys. I, you know, I'm hesitant because it's been such a hell of a year for all of us trying to keep our farms up and running, still mining, trying to stack bags, pouring in that whatever liquidity or capital that you got into just power bills, not even being able to build again. This is the first week where I have gone on and bought GPUs in like probably like eight months or so. It's been a long time. So I actually went on and bought eight A750s, Intel Arc A750s the other day. I dropped like $1,500 on that. I've been dropping a bunch of money on S19s, but I was like, hey, why don't we buy some GPUs today, baby? Because the GPU farm's giving us some money. Let's, let's, start putting some TLC back into the GPU farm. I am I am gonna have to get out. The, I got a ton of GPUs that need to be cleaned up, um, but working the day job is kind of holding me off there. So I'm curious, are you guys bullish enough to be purchasing GPUs like me or are you holding off? Let me know in the comment section in the live chat, of course. Let's go ahead and get into questions and answers. Remember, super chats are never required. Always appreciated and first to be answered. In addition to that, tagging at Son of a Tech will highlight the message orange and make it easier for me to read. All right, let's scroll up. Nothing there yet. The 5700 XT is hard to tune in my experience. I think it's pretty easy to tune. You just flash it. I've done the guide and then in the Hive OS, once you have the right, uh, once you have the right BIOS, you just flash them all. Just looking around says that's some of a tech you waiting for $2 to sell on Able. Um, I'm holding a lot of Able, yeah, but I just put, well, we'll talk about what I've been doing with Able over on Locals uh, after this stream. We'll move it on over there. Okay. Uh, Integra guy says, that's some attack, bought some A750s as well. There you go, my man. Building it up. Three mil says, that's some attack. We back, boys. What GPUs are you buying? The Intel Arc A750s right now. I like buying brand new GPUs that are basically 3070 equivalents and having full um, warranty on them. Heavy Flavor says, As I'm a tech, do you think memory powerful GPUs like the 100 or 170 HX are having a comeback? Uh, I think that there's definitely potential there, but with ProgPal, maybe not as much as people think there might be. Uh, ProgPal is still 
you know, pretty memory intensive, but it does have that extra core in there. So it's a fine line. We had a 2500 CRC. I don't know what that is from Fabian. What currency is that? So thank you for all you do. Thank you for watching my man. Um, let's see. Anonymous Miner says, at Son of a Tech, do you have any news on Casper Casper's move to optical proof of work? No, I don't think that'll happen for quite some time, to be honest. Like five, like uh, they need it to happen before they run out of emissions, right? So before like 2032 or whatever it is. And because ASIC miners won't be sustainable when there's no emissions left on Casper. Steven says, that's not a tech. What do you think about Alephium? Alephium confuses me because they have like those multiple chains that are proof of work. And if you look at the emissions, here's what I don't understand. So we're going to talk about this actually, because I keep, there, there's like the Alephium crowd that's like, you're wrong. It doesn't work like that. Here's the problem that I see. Okay. Now the complaint that I've had is that hero miners has 82% of the known hash rate. Now the argument is, is that is because the API for mining pool stats is only pulling the first, um, the first chain, which I understand. But if that were fucking true, uh, and, and it is true to a certain extent, but if it were true that it wasn't having a huge impact still, then this would be different. Because the amount of blocks going to hero miners is still 66%. So yes, it's about a, what is the delta here? Four or it's 3%, 3.4%, what is it? Five, 15% delta. So feasibly 15% of the hash rate is on a different chain that's not being pulled by mining pool stats, but your block distribution is still jacked up. Okay. So that's kind of my, that's my problem with the lithium right now, as it sits in my understanding of it and what the argument is for it being so swayed to one side, uh, just my thoughts on it. Chuck danger says that's how tech I've been buying M one fifties, 30 and 30 seventies live cheap. So your farm can grow. There you go, my man. Better language session says that son of a tech. Have you mined the Oaks at the, uh, through gaming? I did with rust a little bit. Um, I am going to try it on Fortnite. My Fortnite account got locked out. So I, I got to like wait 24 hours before I'm allowed to get in there or whatever it is. Uh, hard for crypto says that son of a tech. Yeah. I can't get the 5,700 XT stable on Kapow team. Red miner detected GPU will be the death of me. I, yeah, like some, you got to make sure that you're getting those memory straps, right? Snark says, that's some tech you interested in trying out a newer, higher performing thermal putty for VRAM. Yeah. Let me know what it is. Ahmed says, is it possible to flash a 3080 BIOS into the CMP 90 HX? Not to my knowledge. No, they're still locked pretty tightly on the NVIDIA side. Kevin says, as I'm a tech, I just got my M60s, 186th, and just got to industrial electric rates. Nice, dude. Grats on getting there. 186 M60s. <whistles> Nutty, dude. Max Hash 2015 says, as I'm a tech, if you had. Three thirty seventies, two thirty sixty TIs, and one twenty seventy. What would you farm if you could get electric at no cost? I mean, spec mine stuff. That's going to be your biggest. Uh, that's going to be your your largest uh, moonshot, right? So if you if you don't have any electricity, like right now, I would just throw them on Carlson and see what happens. You know what I mean? Stuff that's not listed on an exchange yet, and see what happens. That's what I would do. With, with zero cost in electricity. Jason Rody says, As I'm attack, I picked up an S19K Pro. Nice. How are you liking it? I've heard mixed reviews on it. Some people are loving them because of the efficiency. Other people are saying, you know, when they are buying more than one or, you know, buying a large quantity that they're getting a lot of DOAs. Did yours come in working well? Is the efficiency where it's supposed to be at? Are you going to update to the new firmware that makes it even more efficient from Lux OS? What are you thinking? Epic Lunchbox says, as I'm with that, can you mine Carlson using HiveOS? Yes, it's very simple. 
So, I mean, I can show you real quick. It's just like, uh, like they're just here. You just go to your flight sheet, you know, you add your wallet, you add the coin, you add the pool, pick SRB multi miner, and then boom. If you're not updated uh, to SRB miner 2.2.4, then you can just update your Hive OS with the little update button and you'll be rocking and rolling, good sir. Very simple. Just like anything else in Hive OS. Um, son of a rabid panda. Love that name. It says, about gaming and crypto, I'd love to have my last 15 years of lineage to gaming as crypto NFTs to be able to trade it on a marketplace. That's interesting. I just don't know. No, I don't like that. I don't like it. I'll, I'll tell you why. Because then, because then, then somebody that's bad at the game can just buy your account and look like they're good when they're not good. Remember when that was happening with World of Warcraft? And you'd like get some pug into your into your fucking party, and they just wipe your fucking raid because they're, they they didn't know what they were doing because they paid seven hundred dollars for a ret pally on fucking buy wow accounts dot com or whatever. Remember that shit? No, I don't like it. Mark and Ash two thousand nine says that some attack. Did you see an ETH or do you see an a uh, uh, an a future for ETH, Ethereum Classic? I think is the question. And yeah, I mean, it, it depends on like how much development gets done. Obviously what's been popping off lately is those ETC MC nodes, which is running on the Ethereum classic a chain and has been very profitable. So there are things in development over there that, that mean yes. Better language testing says that somebody like, please let us know how it goes with Neox on Fortnite. I will, I will, we'll see. Anonymous Miner says, "Ask my deck. Are the ASICs helping uh, for the speed of transactions on Caspa? Mm, there wouldn't be a reason for ASICs to help there. Um, so here's a case in which it could stabilized, uh, stabilized hash rate, right? Because once you build all those ASICs and they're deployed, you kind of have like a stabilized hash rate. Um." And in theory, networks can slow down um, if there's a fluctuation of hash rate on the network. Hence the difficulty adjustment problem we saw with Ergo. But it doesn't speed anything up. Three hundred and fifty six people live. We're so back. Son of a rabid panda. I think we're not back until it's seven hundred people live daily. And then, and then technically we're back, but we're, we're building y'all are here at the right time too. Speaking of like, I talk about this in my, you know, in my crypto mining e-course at son of .com, shameless self-promotion, uh, 1999, in case you're interested, plus a free month of, of locals access it, uh, the, we are at that time now where you can see the profitability and you can buy and you can build and not be scared right whereas like the time like running up to this it's been i don't know i'm still buying mining equipment but it's not profitable yet you know what i mean um and prices are still decent on mining hardware so it's kind of like the nicest time it's the most comfortable time uh to build up John Lemon says, as I'm a tech, I hit blocks sporadically, but just my luck, it seems like I get two in a row repeatedly. How many blocks a month would you switch to solo? I don't know what we're talking about mining. I mean, it's all, it's all, it, it depends on, you know, if I'm running a KS0 Pro, I'm probably just like, you know, going to run it on solo and see if I hit anything. That Pepe coin. Uh, 
Uh, Crypto HP is actually asking about ROMs on the 5700. The 5700, you want to do the ETH modded ROMs. Strapping the memory timings is going to improve almost every algorithm. Hog body, we have a trader in the channel. Says, uh, <laughs> get it, trader, trader. <laughs> says, love the channel. I'm not a miner. Get out of here. Uh, says, but as a spec investor on micro uh, proof of work coins, you're the best source for tech info on the tube. Do you think price follows the miner concentration flip flops? Um, miners influence the price of coins for sure, and we've seen that time and time again, um, especially on the low cap coins and i guess if i was getting like this isn't financial advice if i was like investing in proof of work coins i'd probably be trying to buy up the coins that it would be the reverse of what my mining strategy is so mining strategy right up i'm i'm looking for the the coins that are that are high yield if i was buying i'd be looking for the coins that are low yield like right now be buying up all the the egas and eti tokens right because the they're the that means that you have a, a lot of a lot more sell pressure on it right because more people are mining it they're trying to get their power cost back that sort of thing and then you're able to basically uh hold that through and the price will typically go up so i would probably like if, if i was going to i'd probably reverse in fact i did that with able right here recently where when the big farms came on I turned some stuff off and then I bought, I took the daily and then I bought and I put in walls. And th that's because the miners added that sell pressure uh, immediately. And I was able to buy it like lower and then it's come back up. So that's kind of like the way that I, I would like look at it, but I'm also not a trader. So all my stuff is like a little bit longer. I play the game differently. Right. Sustainable Crypto says, that's our tech. I have four XC100s. What would you point them to? I don't know. I haven't messed with the C100s. So Rabbit Panda said, you could have more people live if you shift when you stream. Right now it's 8 to 9 p.m. in Europe. Now you stream at around 2 a.m. in Europe. Right now it's 8 to 9 uh, well, why are you saying it's 8 or 9 and then 2 a.m.? I don't know. I understand what you mean, though. Hard for Crypto says, that's a tech. What do you mean strapping memory? Do you have a 5700 uh, XT BIOS video? Of course I have a 5700 XT BIOS video. Here you go. Give me one second. See if I can find it. Uh, hard fork. Oop. There we go. There's a, I have another one too, like the ultimate, what was it? I've I've covered it multiple times. But you can find it. I I'm sure it'll link it to you at some point in there. I have other ones. There's like a whole 5700 XT ultimate guide for mining or whatever that I have as well. Uh, Savage White Zero says, "That's some attack. Can you do a video of how you clean and repaste your GPUs?" Um, I haven't done one on the ultrasonic cleaner, but repadding and repasting I do have uh, already. Put that one for you. Who asked that one? Oh, yeah.
Um, thoughts on liquid layer. I haven't used it before. Juan says, ask some attack. Hello, what's the difference between your locals page and the e-course page? The e-course is just an e-course, right? So it's a bunch of videos and then there's some supplemental like uh, uh, other material like budgeting and stuff like that. It's a big over, over, overarching overview of, of cryptocurrency through the cycle and mining and all of that. On locals, it's a whole community of uh, miners, uh, GPU, ASIC, FPGA, developers are there as well. And over there, I cover more of the technical stuff uh, that can get you ahead in mining. And it's basically like a, a uh, it's basically like a Twitter or a Facebook feed just for Son of a Tech, right? Plus you get, there's articles and videos and live streams. So all that. Uh, Mark Ness says, I have only 43060 Ti masters left. Where would you point them? Preferably a coin with a proper wallet like Trust or MetaMask. What well, I don't understand. I don't know why Trust or MetaMask would be a, a, a proper wallet either. So I'm getting extra confused. <laughs> you mean the wallets that everybody tries to hack <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry dude. i'm sorry i can't I, don't use those wallets for holding long term bro <laughs> um I, I like i said like it depends like if your power's free go ahead and point them at carlson You'll have to use a CLI wallet, which is what I would consider to be a proper wallet, in my humble opinion. But John says, "Ask some attack. What do you think of the forty sixty Ti's? Um, I think the forty seventy is a better card for mining." Do you think the RX five eighty can be profitable from one more bull run? No. I mean, yes, but you you should have gotten rid of all the RX 580s last cycle. In my humble opinion. Gavin says, as I'm at Locals, it's been worth every penny. Appreciate you. I appreciate you for supporting me over there, man. Rashad says, as I'm is it a good idea to expand in FPGA? Probably not. So um, if I was like, so here's the deal, right? If I was a bitstream developer, then I would buy FPGAs. If you're not a bitstream developer, I just yeah, you know, I just wouldn't fuck with it. Mark Mark and Ash, the reason you don't use trust or MetaMask is because they're the most they're the most attacked wallets. And they're always connected. You know? Especially if you got them like on your phone or something. Scale says, that's time attack Carlson versus Abel. Well, which to mine to keep on Abel or switch and split rigs to 50%, 50%. I'll cover that over on locals. I'm not going to cover that here. Hardcore Crypto says, that's time attack. Thanks, bro. Hell yeah. Heavy Flavor says, at Summit Tech, are you excited on GTA 6 news of the last day's trailer in 40, less than 48 hours? Um, I haven't been paying attention to it, to be honest. Like, I'll play GTA 6. I never liked uh, GTA Online. I'm like that guy, but I love the GTA stories. So I'll probably pick it up, play the GTA story, 100% the campaign, have a good time, drop it, and never play it again. Probably. Uh, JL says that's some attack. Do you, if arcs run well on a mixed rig or do you know? No, they don't really, I don't run mixed rigs at all. JL. Um, I just don't mixed rigs cause too many problems. I stopped doing mixed rigs like six years ago, bro. It's just, I, I, I don't do it. AMD with AMD, NVIDIA with NVIDIA, Intel with Intel, preferably 
3070s with 3070s, 5700s with 5700s, A750s with A750s. I go down to the model. It's just way more reliable that way. If you can. I get it if you got a 3070, 3080, blah, blah, blah. But if it's like, then when you're applying overclocks, you have to individually go through and like set each overclock for each car. It's just a pain in the ass, man. And then you like, it's just too much, man. They break all the time. Let's go ahead and move on over to locals. Let me create the page over there and we'll talk a little bit more. I'll tell you guys what I've been doing. Over. Oh, never mind. We're not going to locals today because they just went down for maintenance. What a shitty timing, huh? All right. Locals is down for maintenance. How about I test out. We'll do locals later tonight. Uh, at the, I'll do it at the farm in a little while. <laughs> uh, we'll, do, we'll, we'll do a stream from the farm on the cell phone in like two hours and 45 minutes. Yeah, and I'm going to get set up for the weekend. Ooh, excuse me. Thanks, everybody. We're so back, baby. Congratulations to everybody that stuck around. Thanks, everybody that supported me through the bear market as well. You guys rock. Be sure to hit the like, comment, subscribe buttons down below. Check out sonofatech.locals.com once it's out of maintenance. And then check out, of course, sonofatech.com for the crypto mining e-course. And I will see you next Tuesday.